Hi, I'm Mark McClellan, Stewardship Coordinator for the Georgia Forestry Commission, and welcome to another one of our virtual field day series where we discuss the most common topics of forest stewardship. Today's episode, we're going to talk about thinning. Thinning is probably one of the most important silvicultural activities a landowner can do. It helps increase the growth and also just improves the health of the overall stand. To talk more about thinning, I want to introduce Chris Howe, our stewardship specialist. Chris is going to talk about timing of thin and the different thinning methods. I hope you will enjoy today's episode. So Chris, what kind of stand do we have here? Hi Mark, so we've got approximately a 14 year old unthinned planted loblolly pine stand. And what I'm doing here is I'm using an increment bore to actually bore into the tree so I can count the growth range to confirm the age. All right, let's take a look at that. So we can count the, the actual growth rings starting at the pith and count our way out of each annual growth ring and confirm the actual age of the tree. Yep, looks to be approximately 14 years old. Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about the thinning process? So what we're going to do here is do a, a row thinning in this pine plantation to where we take out every third, fourth, or fifth row. What that's going to do is that's actually going to increase the amount of sunlight that's reaching the forest floor and also free up nutrients for these remaining trees to grow. Would you happen to know some goals and objectives for this particular landowner? So the number one goal or objective for the landowner is an actual economic or timber return on the investment. But their secondary goal is actually wildlife. So not only are we going to free up more nutrients for the trees to grow, but we're also going to increase the amount of sunlight that reaches the forest floor, which will allow for more vegetation growth that will be beneficial to the wildlife. What are some other indicators to tell us the timing of a thin? Sure, Mark, that's a great question. Let me get this increment bore out of the tree and then we'll go talk about that. So Mark, as you can see here, there's not a lot of sunlight reaching the forest floor. And a term we use in forestry to quantify that is actually canopy closure. And as you can see from these individual trees, the canopies of these trees are starting to touch. Um, which reduces the amount of sunlight that is able to penetrate through and actually reach the forest floor. And another indicator that we can use to determine when a stand needs to be thin is the actual stand density or basal area of the stand. So Mark, what we have here is a 10-factor prism, and I'm going to use this to calculate the actual basal area of this stand. What do we have, Chris? Looks to be approximately 160 square feet of basal area, which is just a little bit high. So what basal area would you, would you recommend for thin? I would recommend starting the planting on your thinning around 120 square feet of basal area, and that gives you plenty of time to make a harvest scheduling plan and also contact a logger that would come out and do the harvest for you. Uh, one good last indicator that we can talk about is the crown ratio. And if you look up at some of the crowns of these trees, you'll notice that some of the crowns are starting to die back. And some of them are starting to reach less than 30% of the overall height of the tree. Um, and that, that's just one good last indicator that we can talk about. Good information, Chris. Is there a thin stand we can go look at? Sure, we got one right over here we can go look at. So this is the thin stand? Yeah, so this was a fifth row thinning in a planted pine stand. And then from the remaining four rows of trees, we selectively removed some of the trees just to allow the remaining trees more room to grow. Chris, what do you think the basal area is out here? Approximately 70 to 80 square feet. So what would happen if you say you missed a thin or just didn't thin at all? So eventually, if we don't do a thinning, uh, we're going to have some self thinning that occurs. So some of the trees that probably would have been removed during that thinning operation are going to be the trees that die off. Um, an alternative to that is you could introduce some forest health related issues to the stand such as insect or disease related problems or you could even have a forest fire that totally destroys your stand. Can you give some ways GFC can come out here and assist landowners? Sure. GFC has 32 field foresters throughout the state um, who could come out and help the landowner through the entire process. Thanks Chris. We'll teach us more about thinning. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. To learn more about this topic or any other topics, please visit our website, gatrees.org. Thanks for watching today's episode.